we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna look a little bit in Isaiah and I would think I would hope that that would be maybe tonight and then next week at this time and we should be finished with that to move to Ezekiel <clears throat> we're not trying to share the whole book we're trying to focus in on certain aspects that are very very important and certainly what we discussed in Jeremiah is a major part of that book um, but we're also <clears throat> discussing Adonai and uh, we've, we've got an old chart up here from uh, let's see I can't tell there's no picture of me here to tell if you can see that but uh, okay yeah you can see part of it <clears throat> anyway the sufferings of Christ, the corridor, here's Adonai, here's going through that corridor, here's the evildoer, uh, here's you and me back over there. And <clears throat> Anyway, uh, that's out of 1 Peter class, and we've, uh, we've found ourselves back in 1 Peter, and, uh, we, <clears throat> um, and tonight we're going to, we're going to do uh, some scriptures that are similar to what we covered in um, Jeremiah, but they're going to be shorter versions of it. And um, <clears throat> and remember that uh, Jeremiah, uh, Isaiah will be in tonight, but uh, Isaiah was long before Jeremiah, and it was uh, <clears throat> was uh, preaching and prophesying. Uh, during the Assyrian captivity and thereabouts, or the coming of it. <clears throat> and um, Jeremiah was during the Babylonian captivities. And both of those captivities, <clears throat> the, the Assyrian related to Israel, Babylonian related to Judah. <clears throat> and um, But we're looking in Isaiah because... A completely different time is upon them. A completely different prophet is prophesying and is, is delivering the heart of God to them. And it's the same story it, over and over and over and over. Um, and that story is <clears throat> that uh, there is this place of uh, suffering that isn't just the devil, that isn't just circumstances, that is God allowing it. And one way that we can know that in the Old Testament is when the name Adonai is being used. Now, in Jeremiah, <clears throat> Jeremiah's emphasis wasn't so much on Adonai's work uh, in their lives as much as his book was about Babylon is coming. God's ordered it. Babylon is God's hand, and you need to submit. And they're going, no, no. You know, they're they're just looking at everything like, well, this is just a horrible circumstance. When it was meant to be the sufferings of Christ, where they might fellowship, as as um, um, uh, Paul talks about it in Philippians, uh, that they might fellowship with Him in the sufferings of Christ. And um, and that that means to conform to his image, to go through what Jesus went through when he was innocent and when everything was unfair. And he did it through uh, his nature, the spirit of the lamb. And um, so God's wanting more than just to be a savior to save us from stuff, to save us from evildoers or bad people or whatever, <clears throat> to... Uh, he's wanting us to go through these sufferings, which we've we've put a little name on it called the corridor. And through that period of time, that's the sufferings of Christ. And uh, to to be of His Spirit and to be after His uh, nature. And this is where you get the judgment, where the, the the Jesus sits on the on the throne to judge, and He brings in in and He divides the sheep from the goats, and He puts the goats on His left hand and the sheep on His right hand. And the sheep are the ones that are his and that have that spirit. And they understand the spirit of sacrifice that Jesus went through and can identify with him and can fellowship with him in it. And the fellowship isn't just talking about going through stuff. It's talking about that nature that he put within us and talking about him being able to, to um, 
live in us. Anyway, so um, Jeremiah had Adonai 13 times. Isaiah uh, mentions him 48 times. And uh, a couple of notable ones. Maybe the first one isn't so notable to you. Isaiah 3.15 says this, <clears throat> What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith Adonai, Lord God of hosts. Adonai is the name used there. And he's the one that is particularly uh, involved, uh, the Godhead uh, involved with us when we're going through this corridor of suffering so that because it's, you know, I mean, we can we can end up being an evildoer if we're not careful <laughs> because then we're just retaliating back in the same manner in the same spirit and the same judgments and all that kind of stuff uh, where Jesus opened not his mouth. <clears throat> so um, this is pretty harsh for Adonai saying, what, what, what do you mean? What mean ye that you beat my people in pieces? And you grind their grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> a couple more scriptures in the same chapter. You're familiar with these, though, in the use of Adonai. Maybe never knew that this was it. This is um, Isaiah 6, 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord... I saw Adonai sitting upon a throne high and lifted up in his train filled the temple and then drop down to verse 8 also. Um, also, I heard the voice of the Lord Adonai saying, Adonai saying, whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Okay, well, what do you think Adonai is asking? Who's, gonna, who's he going to send for what? He's going to, he is the God of the the overseeing the sufferings of Christ, overseeing those who are going through it. And of course we we just go, well, I'll be a missionary. He's <laughs> not talking about that. He wouldn't use the name Adonai there. It would use probably Je Jehovah. Um, uh, whom shall I send and whom will go for us? This is Adonai saying that. And then said I hear my send me. Okay. And if you read after that, what he's sending him into is till everything's, it's going to be some suffering going on there. All right. So now let's begin uh, what the Lord has for us um, uh, in Isaiah for hopefully the next two times we're together, maybe three, because <clears throat> I went a little long on that explanation. But it, it because this is so similar to First Peter, it, we don't want to miss it, okay? All right. Isaiah chapter 7. And what we're going to do is we're going to get an example of evildoers here. <clears throat> and then maybe next class we'll look at another aspect of this. All right. Isaiah chapter 7. And we're going to read verses uh, um, 1 through 6. I don't know, where am I at here? Seven, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. All right, we'll go further than that. We'll go all the way down to at least 14. Uh, and then just my little note here. Uh, when we're in this corridor of sufferings, when we're going through this thing, Adonai is over it. And he may give us a sign. He may give us help in, in terms of a sign or in terms of help or in terms of um, intervening on some level. But his goal is never to save us from the sufferings of Christ. His goal is to help us in the, go through it in a right spirit without and we'll see all that probably next week or the week after if we go to th if we if we make it through three father son and holy spirit um <clears throat> so Adam and i may give you a sign and that's verse 14 speak to you that's verse 7 we op openly speak his word to the point to point you in the right spirit or to raise your faith that's verses 7 through 9 so the reason I'm reading that is to say 
that if he's not going to deliver us because he doesn't want to deliver us from the sufferings of Christ, he wants us to learn the lamb in the midst of things that are unfair and wrong and wrong attitudes, wrong motives and all of this kind of stuff and still be with him in spirit. <clears throat> uh, but he can do some of these things, give you a sign or, or speak to you or openly speak the word to the point and to point you in the right direction uh, or mainly he would, it really wouldn't be the right direction. It would be get you back onto the right spirit um, or to raise your faith. Uh, if you're faltering a bit and you have you have examples of those here all right so let's read let's start at verse 1 um, Isaiah 7 and it came to pass in the days of Ahaz the son of Jotham the son of Uzziah king of Judah that Rezin the king of Syria and Pekah the son of Remali, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it. Okay, so, uh, and, and then it goes on to say at this point, but could not prevail against it. Okay, so <clears throat> you've got um, one of Judah or one of God's people's enemies, which is Syria in this case, Rezin, and you've got uh, one of the, the kings of Israel going against Judah, joining with God's enemies, and we'll see we'll see their spirit. We'll see that they will um, be as an evildoer. That's what this little guy right here represents, an evildoer. And in in First Peter, an evildoer is someone like Babylon or Assyria or a, a pe bunch of people get angry with you and, and judge you over things that you didn't do or, or accuse. Um, and, um, and some of God's people are joining with the enemy to come against Judah. So let's, let's find out <clears throat> why. To, it says um, to make war against it. And it was told the house of David, which is Judah, it's told the house of David saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim, okay, or Ephraim. And Ephraim is just another name for Israel that's used uh, a lot, actually. <clears throat> so one of their own, one of God's people of Judah, one of their own uh, from Israel uh, is joining with other evildoers. <clears throat> and um, uh, let's see. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim, and his heart was moved, and the heart of his people. Okay, so this is a common. This is this is a common reaction. This is why I got the 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 girl and the guy out here not yet in the corridor. You're getting the information, as it were from the, the evil, about the evildoers, or from the evildoers, whichever direction that it comes. And, uh, and it causes you immediately to have a reaction and a concern. And, a, and that's, that's okay, because you're not in the court of suffering yet. And that could happen outside here, or it could happen in the early stages right there. Um, and his heart was moved, and the heart of his people as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shear Jasub, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. Now there's a lot to that, but that's not my goal right now is to deal with the conduit. But some of you may know that the 2020 vision included building one of those. Um, and uh, verse 4, And say unto them, Take heed. This is the Lord sending his prophet Isaiah not to um, uh, the 
bad guys, evildoers, but to the ones that are going to be uh, um, misjudged or judged incorrectly or attacked or whatever. Because God's first concern is his people to get his spirit. Now, you get an example of that. Uh, when Jesus is in, when they're all the disciples with Jesus are in the Garden of Gethsemane, and and so then Judas comes in and he brings this bunch of people with torches and swords and stuff, stuff like that, and um, uh, Peter's got a sword there, and so Peter Peter's going to help Jesus not go through the sufferings that he's you know meant to go through. That's going to release a spirit that can save the world. So Peter pulls out a sword, being a helper. Well, you got a helper over here. Got a helper. So Peter jumps in the big middle of the corridor and is going to help Jesus not suffer. Now, he's already proven that before because Jesus said, you know, in uh, what is it, Matthew 15, I have to go to uh, Jerusalem and I'm going to be condemned by the priests and the, you know, the scribes and all of that, and they're going to come against me and they're going to crucify me. And Peter goes, not so, Lord. No, no. And Jesus goes, what are, you know, what are you talking about? You know, that would be like trying to talk him out of going to the cross, which he was, but he saw it as this is a bad thing. And Jesus is going, no, this is this releasing this spirit will do more than all of the swords, which at that time they had like a like two. Jesus had to go. It's enough. He got, yeah, just keep them. He didn't, probably didn't know, know immediately he's going to pull it out and cut somebody's ear off. But um, so so in in that situation in Matthew sixteen is it? I think it's Matthew sixteen. Um, <clears throat> he rebukes Peter. And says, "You savor the things that be of man, and not the things that be of God." Well, this is this is this is this area of truth is important to God because He didn't just come down here to save us from our stuff or be a savior. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit got together in the very early stages and said. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And this is the image of God. Jesus proves it by sitting on the throne of the universe that everybody has to look at. And he's not a, a, a glorious, victorious, resurrected king. They're worshiping a slaughtered lamb. All right. So back to the example in the garden. <clears throat> so, so Peter pulls up, cuts off the guy's ear. And instead of Jesus rebuking uh, Judas and all the guards and all the people, he rebukes Peter. Put away your sword. He that lives by the sword will die by it. We live by something else. Oh, I could just keep on going on the examples of this because the Bible is full of it. But until the Lord gives us eyes to see it, we won't. But we, we seek him and we say, Lord, Open your heart, you know. I mean, even sometimes if the Lord was rebukes us, he's trying to help us see what his heart is in something that we can get with him. All right. <clears throat> so, um, verse um, four again. And Isaiah, go to him and say, take heed and be quiet. He's going to the one the, he's going to Judah. He's going to the ones that are of God, but are being judged unfairly, that are being attacked unfairly, that are being um, uh, threatened. And, and God says, uh, Isaiah, go talk to the king of Judah, not the king that joins sides with the enemy. I can see Isaiah coming. He might have been old at that time, so he's moving slow. Somebody else heard the story that God spoke to him and what he said. said and, you know, uh, and so the other guy runs up real fast to the king and says, you know, 
uh, Isaiah's coming, and um, he's going to have a word from the Lord how we can deal with these evil doers, and we'll we'll crush them because the Lord's on our side, and that's you know we've got you know we're going to have power, supernatural power. Well, that, if there was somebody that did that, they'd be wrong. It's not in the Bible. I just said, you know. So Isaiah comes, and um, he says, take heed of what? He, he didn't say, take heed. You need to start getting some weapons and this and that. Take heed and be quiet. Don't be using your mouth. Okay? And you know that all that is in First Peter and deals with that. When you get in the corridor, you got to watch your tongue. And, and the same thing was going on with Jeremiah speaking to the, the king of Judah way down the road there about Babylon. Um, take heed, be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted. Now, what does he mean when he says don't be faint-hearted? What does he mean? What does he mean? What does he mean in relationship to, to this? He's saying when you're in here, don't... Um, uh, he's saying you need to make sure you have your soul saved because your soul will just freak out and your soul will override your spirit and your soul will override the voice of the Lord and uh, all of those things will start rising in you self-protection we've got to do this I've got to do that you know, you know all these things going on when he's basically pointing to him to Adonai and saying, look, when you go through this, there's a person of, of an official name that is over this in the Godhead, in the Trinity, um, uh, in Elohim, that will oversee this. So this is what I'm telling you, all right? So take heed, be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted. Don't make sure you you get your soul saved, and that's a big part of First Peter. Okay, um, for uh, the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of resin with Syria. Don't be don't be afraid of these two tails of of firebrands or um, uh, Syria, or well resin with Syria. And of the son of Remaliah, because Syria and Ephraim or Ephraim and the son of Remaliah have taken evil counsel. Don't don't against thee, don't don't let your soul be uncrucified. Get it in line. If you're gonna come into this corridor with the Lord and get out of it right, your soul can't be in charge. So um that because they've they've taken evil counsel, they're using their mouth already. It's not just the counsel following through of coming down here and crushing you. They're talking bad about you, okay? But don't get all mixed up in that stuff. That's not your realm. Um, they've taken counsel against thee, saying, so this is their evil counsel. Let us go up against. Let us go up against Judah and vex it. And let us make a breach therein for us and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabiel. Tabiel. And so this is, a, they just decided, you know, well, you know, we're, I think we can defeat them. Let's just go take them over. See, that's using force. That's using uh, uh, the, the spirit of this world, the wisdom of this world. Um, so then verse 7. So now he's ready to tell, tell him directly what God said. Okay. Thus saith Adonai God, Lord God, Adonai. It would not have that name there if this, this wasn't a situation of the sufferings of Christ, okay? <clears throat> Thus saith Adonai, God, 
what they just said shall not stand. It shall not stand. What these evildoers said shall not stand. It, sh it sh neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. Okay? So that means that Assyria is coming soon, because that's what really does the number on their head. And when we were in Jeremiah, it was Babylon playing the same role. Okay? Uh... Verse 9, um, and the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah, son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. If you don't listen, this is just the same thing that we went through bunches of, of sessions with Jeremiah. And he's talking to the king of Judah, but it was way years later after this and it's the same thing. If you don't believe, guess what? Um, you're not going to be established. Established in what? Established in the Lord, in the nature of the Lord, in the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not something to be fought for, to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and became as a man. And as a man, he became as a servant. And as a servant, he became as a thief and as a, or a, as a criminal. As a criminal, he was crucified on the cross. God raised him from the dead and hath highly exalted that spirit, that lamb, and given it a name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee, whether in heaven or earth or under the earth, is going to bow to that spirit. Because that lowly spirit did not defeat the enemy with power. Neither did Jesus on the cross. All right. Verse 10. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee, so, so this is uh, the Lord speaking through Isaiah and says, Ask for a sign. Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. <clears throat> now, Ahaz, the king of Judah, is going to try to be spiritual here, okay? So he says, but Ahaz says, verse 12, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. <clears throat> now listen to the response. <clears throat> Verse 13, and he said, Hear ye now, O house of Israel, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? <clears throat> I wrote down, weary, weary God also by not giving him his son through going into willing weakness while trusting in Adonai. So, it's like, you know, you need to hear from Adonai what this is about or you're going to mess up. So ask God to give you a sign. Okay, well, <clears throat> he says, um, uh, verse 14, Therefore the Lord Adonai, again, therefore the Lord Adonai himself shall give you a sign. Okay, okay. Guess what? Again, this thing is just blaring <laughs> that this is the sufferings of Christ. This is blaring it. Um, so, so Adonai is going to tell you, look, here's how you get through this. All right. <clears throat> um, for, ver, verse 14, therefore, the Lord, which is Adonai himself shall give you a sign. Behold. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which you know means God with us. This is the sign. This is the sign. That's not going to happen for, for <clears throat> you know, what? Thousands of years, maybe. Um, I mean, there's 400 years between the Testaments, and this still isn't as far down as even Jeremiah and Babylon. So we're talking, how does Jesus coming as a baby have 
any effect on us. Give us something we can go with. He is. He's giving you exactly what you need to be able to handle the quarter. <clears throat> so, I wrote, um, Therefore the Lord Adonai himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. A young, a young virgin girl and a helpless baby will represent God with us. Not just the fact that Jesus came to this girl and it was God with us, but the fact that in their weakness and their smallness and their emptiness and their nothing to fight with, you know, what's, what's baby Jesus going to fight with? He's going to, maybe he's got a little binky, I'll, I'll throw this at you, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Or Mary, who is very young, I mean, you know, they put her sometimes, I don't know what ages, but if we just gave her 15 years old, what's she going to do? Come on, come on, Remaliah, <laughs> you know, put up your dukes, you know. Well, this was two mighty armies. <clears throat> and God is saying, here's your sign. Here's your sign how you're going to handle this. You're not going to handle it by your strength. In fact, you're going to become empty and weak and small, and, and you're going to do it willingly in my spirit. And then Adonai will take care of them, but will not stop you from going through this because his goal is not to function. Adonai's goal is not to function as a deliverer. His goal is is to function as one who makes sure whatever, I mean, that's we have free will, but to help us go through the sufferings of Christ in a right spirit without judging and without uh, <clears throat> using our tongue and, and, and doing all this stuff and, and fighting back and all these things. <clears throat> so, um, and she'll call his name Emmanuel. God with us. Proof that their strength and numbers is not enough, but your willing weakness and lowliness is. It'll do the trick. Because the trick isn't to defeat those evildoers. The trick is to let them do just like Jeremiah told, told uh, Judah to do. Let Babylon do what they will because... Nebuchadnezzar is God's hand. You go through this in the right spirit and you'll see the glory of God. Or if you will believe, you surely will be established. See, <clears throat> um, those words that Jesus is the one who said those words. He said, um, I told you if you'd believe, you'd see the glory of God. Okay, well, they're all crying and wanting a miracle and all this stuff out of Jesus over Lazarus's death. But he's he's trying to get them. They're in the quarter. They could they could be going through that instead of it just being a bad situation and they're crying and it's just just out of control and you know all this stuff's happening. And it's just oh it's so terrible. You could have you know you could have been with Jesus in it in a right spirit, and you just seen the glory of God. All right, <clears throat> and the glory of God isn't just raising Lazarus up. I mean, he's going to die eventually anyway. But I mean, we're, we, we need the miracle. Well, the miracle is that he that is bound in, in death clothes, like Jesus, the baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes, has no strength, has no words, has nothing. And so you look to Jesus. Uh, in that situation. All right, <clears throat> so um, Okay, what time is it? <clears throat> I would like, but I don't know I am genuinely tempted to stop right now. Because I'm looking, um, 
I'm looking at the next chapter. And the next chapter, this is uh, Isaiah chapter 8, <clears throat> following close behind on 7. <clears throat> but in between 7 and 8, there has arisen uh, a new a new evildoer, if you will, a new enemy. And uh, <clears throat> in uh, chapter 7, it was um, Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, uh, over Israel, that were coming against Judah. But in chapter 8, um, it's a much more ominous, powerful, bigger, spreading, great, greater than those guys. Those seem like sissies now. But at the time, they didn't seem that way to Judah. And they needed some preparation for what was coming. And so that's who Pekah, the son of Remaliah, and Rezin, and that's, who they, that's what that was. That was practice so that they could get their feet under this and get their teeth into the reality of what this is going to call for when Assyria, Assyria, and at that time Assyria was the Babylon of that time. It was that big, that powerful, that controlling. It, it was a world power at that time. <clears throat> um, so, um, so I think that we will, um, I think that we'll just stop right now. Um, anybody feel like, uh, oh, I see we got Emmy with us. Hi, Emmy. Good to have you with us. Um, next week, for all of us, all of y'all, um, this uh, next chapter is going to add uh, a new a new bent and it was the same bent it was the same factor that we dealt with in uh, Jeremiah chapter 46 anybody remember that where uh, Egypt came in as a helper into the corridor and they were not of God and, and Judah should never have invited them and God got very very angry because once you're in here I probably need to get one of these with a little guy or girl on here once you're in here <clears throat> that it, it's no place for for um helpers, we'll just stick with that for right now, comforters, uh, people that we go to apart from the Lord at this time. You, you can do it so many other ways. It's good to get counsel over here in the mouth of two or three witnesses, da 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 you know, in the multitude of counselors or safety, but in here, none of that, none of that counts because then you're violating Adonai. You are bringing something in and saying, I don't trust him and I'm scared and I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to call for help and I'm going to do everything I can to save myself. It's a wrong place to be doing that. Wrong place to be doing that. I'm not talking to you, Emmy, over that. I'm talking to all of us. I just, I just realized I'd called your name and started saying that. Um, so, okay, let's, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much that you, uh, that what you are sharing is spirit and life, that it is not just meant to teach us through human words. But this book whether it's Jeremiah or Isaiah or, as we'll see soon enough, Ezekiel or anybody. It is spirit 
and life. And Father, without even understanding it at all, something inside of us can bear witness that this is the Lord. This is the Lord. And Father, I pray for those that this happens to, that they will not pass it off, but they will ask you the next thing. Lord, open my eyes, open my hearts. If it's you, I long to know you. I don't want to just be a Christian in the sense of hearing a good sermon and commenting on it afterwards, but finding you and finding these realities that are just as true in the New Testament and particularly we're true in Christ, true of Christ, as the Lamb of God that changed everything and saved all of us because of a selfless, non-threatening attack back. But in lowliness being with you, Father, and trusting your fatherhood and trusting the Holy Spirit, he opened not his mouth and he bore shame and suffering. I will cherish the old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Father, help us to really grasp this because it will go from us if we don't. And so, so we pray and so we reach out and we don't do it individually. We don't pray based on our ability to grasp or hold on or keep holding on. We pray based on Adonai who will see us through if we will believe we shall be established. As Jesus said, I told you if you would believe you would see the glory of God. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.